Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have a lidded box for you. This is one that has a separate lid to it and it's not a box I do particularly often. Actually, I, don't, I think I might have only done it once before. But I'm going to show you an easy way to make a box with a lid without complicated measurements. So it literally is a box with a lid um, that goes on and off and I've just put a ribbon belly band around it. So I'm going to show you how to make it. And like I say, there are, the, I, I've seen the rounds of the 1 16th rule um, so that your box lid fits over simply and easily. I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. I'm going to move that out of the way and grab my scoring tool, which is behind me. There we go. And I've got cardstock that measures uh, 7 by 7 inches and I've got a separate lid that measures 5 and 1 eighth of an inch by 5 and 1 eighth of an inch and in metric that would be 17 and a half by 17 and a half or th and 13 by 13. So basically with the base this base has got a two inch base um, so uh, five centimeter base so you score the base at two inches on all four sides so really simple just keep turning it around and turning it around. So you would score it, if you're a metric person, you would score that at five centimetres all the way around. Move that one out of the way. And the top one, we've made this five and one eighth of an inch um, or 13 centimetres. Now, the lid of the base of this box is three inches or seven and a half centimetres. So the top needs to be a fraction bigger so it needs to be a total of one eighth of an inch bigger or half a centimetre bigger so by making the cardstock to start with that one eighth of an inch bigger or that half centimetre bigger when you score and we want the lid only to be one inch on one inch or two and a half centimetres all the way round and I'm going to get my ruler and prove it to you what you're left with is a square in the middle Got a square here that's three centimetre, three inches. This square, which you probably can't see in the lighting, when I can find my ruler, will be three and one eighth of an inch. And let me, I really hope you can see that. Typically, me to pick up a really particularly filthy ruler. <laughs> Let's do it with this purple one. So you can see it's eight centimetres for the metrics and it's three and one eighth of an inch for those of you who are working in Imperial. So that's how you do it. You start with your cardstock um, to be that one eighth of an inch bigger to compensate for the lid. So if you were doing, you know, if you wanted to have a box that, that was flush all the way down, you'd just do the same size cardstock as this and add in that one eighth. Anyway, that's the science lesson over, or the maths lesson I should say. Let me move that out of the way. I'm going to fold on my score lines, but I'm not going to build the box just yet. So fold on all the score lines, burnish these well. And the same on this one. This one's the cherry cobbler textured cardstock. This is crumb cake, this one here. And the original one I made, I'll bring that back into shot, is the uh, old olive textured cardstock and chocolate chip at the top. Right, snip up all of these sides here. So those two, and then turn it around to do the ones that are opposite. And the same with the bottom. to one side for a minute I'm going to do my stamping and I've used the Christmas collectibles set which is lovely it's a bit I don't know Scandinavian maybe with the some of these sorts of designs very popular now and the matching Christmas ornament punch you can talk about so you're not getting lights dazzling you um, it's actually on a bundle in the catalogue which I love I love punches anyway I would have bought it had it not been but I, that made me even happier and particularly to get 15% off I think it's 25 pounds for the two which is a pretty good value because these are 15 pounds on their own anyway Right, so I've taken this image down here. I've got some cherry copper ink. Let's turn it the right way around. And I'm just simply going to punch that out. Line 
light up. I've got spotlights on my desk and they're throwing awful shadows. You probably can't see them. Let me tilt that so I can see. There we go. Terrible shadows. And then my paper piercer. I just want to pierce a hole in the top so I can feed some uh, string through. Well, ribbon actually. Baker's, no. Linen thread even. I'm just making it a bit bigger. Right, let's put something on the front of that. I've put one of the Raspberry Ripple um, in colour embellishments and I'm, I don't know whether I want to do the same again or not. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I'll do the same. But clearly, by the fact that I've got none left in there, I need to buy some more. Right, a couple of mini glue dots on the back of that. Just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to, whoops, put my linen thread on this now. Just so that when I come to make the box up and string it and everything, it makes life easier. Four fingers and the thumbs. Just tie a little, little knot in the top there. There we go. Right, let's build the box up now. So we've got these larger sections here and these smaller ones, we're going to stick these to the inside. So, a squadge of glue on, oh, far too much glue, oops, let's try and scoop that up and on the grid paper as well. Squadge of glue there, don't throw your glue on your grid paper, it's not clever. Um, let's see if I can pick that up. Straight down the back of my hand. Look at that. I'm trying not to get it onto the project. Slightly less glue is always better. Line that up on the sides. Just hold it in place for a second. So that's the bottom of the box. Then the top, exactly the same. Again, try not to throw your glue everywhere. And just bring those round and hold the sides. Just hold them into place for a few seconds. I could have probably done this with snail. I'm not that accurate. Sticky strip would be good as well if you had if you were more accurate than me. <laughs> right, let's pop the lid on. And so now you can see that that sits perfectly over the top when your flaps, when your tabs are in properly. There you go. So that sits and it's just got, there you go, you can see it there. It's just got that little bit of extra give so that the base isn't buckling. So there we go, right. Some of the designer series paper. This is the Seasons of Style because I'm working with those colours. And this measures two and seven eighths of an inch by two and seven eighths of inch, an inch, or if you're working in metric, seven and a half by seven and a half centimetres. And then I've got my cherry cob. I had my cherry cobbler ribbon. Here it is. I'm going to try and tie a neat bow. I don't know how I did that. It's just, just pure fluke somehow. I don't know. I'm rubbish at tying pretty knots. Somebody is going to have to point out how to do them or teach me how to tie a pretty knot. See, look at that. Terrible. <laughs> oh well. And then this section, this tab here, if I've got this right, I probably haven't made it long enough, I should be able to feed that through, pull it through as a slip. Yes, there we go. And that is a pretty easy box with a separate lid and no complicated sixteenth of inches, six, 
16, 18th or 15, 16th and stuff like that. But I hope you like it. I will put all of the measurements on my blog for you so you can, um, you know, you don't have to be pausing or anything like that and you can go and back, go back and watch it at a later date. Thank you very much. Bye.